Hi, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Boating Roundtable. I'm Boating Editor-in-Chief Kevin Falvey, coming to you from Long Island, New York. I'm joined today by Dan Harper, founder and CEO of Siren Marine, along with Jim Hendricks, our electronics editor, coming to you from Los Angeles. And today we're going to talk about the Internet of Things, IoT, and how it applies to boats. Dan, welcome to the show. Kevin, thanks so much for having me on, on, uh, on the show, uh, on board here today. Uh, always my favorite topic to talk about and um, excited to share some insight and in what's happening at Siren with you guys. Well, certainly we're looking forward to, uh, to learning what you have to say. I know Jim has got a, a bunch of questions for you. We have an article coming up in the next issue of Boating Magazine, kind of detailing some of these things, but we'd really like to uh, hear from the horse's mouth. Jim, why don't you just start in? Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate it. And uh, welcome, Dan. I'm glad, to, glad you could be here today to talk to us a little bit about boat telematics. I, it's an exciting topic. Uh, not, not only do we have a story coming out in our November-December issue, but we had one in our September issue. So it's a hot topic for us, and, and I think for a lot of our readers and our viewers, they're, they're tremendously interested in it. Um, what I would like you to start off by doing is explaining a little bit about what telematics means to a, a boater today. Could you tell us about that? Sure, Jim. Absolutely. Um, actually, I, it's a great question to start with. And uh, the, the, the last article came out. Great job on that. Uh, uh, great to read. Great to see Telmax getting um, the recognition and kind of presence that it's that's starting to gain. And I, and I love the way you phrase the question, you know, tell us about telematics. And it's, it's a term that I think we'll see kind of uh, go away in the near future. <clears throat> because what the, the explanation, I think, in a nutshell would be, when we think about uh, marine telematics and especially kind of on the technical side of the industry that's been following it for a long time, like yourself, uh, I know our conversations over the years have been, you know, revolved around telematics, where they are, and where they're going. And, and I think the way I would describe it to people today is that when you think about telematics or when, when you think about your boat in the modern day and how you want to interact with your boat or how your boat should perform, you expect it to behave like your connected home or your connected car or your connected stuff or your Apple watch or your, your phone. The telematics really is, is the technical fancy word for a smart boat or for a connected boat. And, and that's really in a nutshell what it is. It takes, in our case, what we've done at Siren um, after this, this new product that we've just um, finished that will be shipping in October is the culmination of, of, of 10 years of development and following the trends and looking at what are the expectations of the consumer today, what's available technology and putting those together. Telematics really is the realization of the connected home, the connected car, the connected world we live in for the marine industry. You can check your batteries. Your batteries will actually alert you when they get low. You can turn your lights on. You can control your C-Zone digital switching system. You can uh, receive maintenance alerts from your motor. You know, all of, all of the connectivity that's possible on the stuff on your boat is now possible to receive on your phone, just like everything else in our lives. I got you. So, so at one point, there were a lot of companies involved in um, monitoring the boat, whether it was for theft or high water alarms or, you know, a bilge that keeps going off. But really where um, Siren Marine has gone now is in allowing you not just to monitor the boat, but also to control functions, onboard functions. So, and we've learned this week that another major player in the market, Garmin, is getting into that field as well. So, but you have been leading the way. Can you tell us how Siren Marine, you know, started, where it came from, and where it's going? Yeah, absolutely. And I think part of the reason why we've been able to lead is that when I started, I was, uh, I was working in the marine industry as a yacht captain, uh, primarily on the sailboat racing side and restoration and, and new boat wind design construction. So prior to that, I had a, uh, I had a small software company in college that um, I sold right when I was graduating, went sailing for a couple of years after school to go have some fun and take that year off and wound up working in the marine industry for the next 20 years. <laughs> that origin, um, you know, I've, I've, I've been involved in computers since I was, you know, a little kid when the Atari 800 first came out, I had one of those. And so programming and code and building things has been a, a lifelong thing. And then a 
a career in boats <clears throat> where I learned firsthand that the problems I was seeing were, were dead batteries and bilges filling up with water. And, and I was in the classic wooden sailboat world, so this was a very common problem. And sometimes those problems became really serious if you didn't detect it early enough. So that was the spark that really made me as an entrepreneur want to find a solution to that, to that problem. And it turns out that it's, it's a problem shared by all boaters, whether it's just we worry about our battery or, or our electronics being stolen or our outboards being stolen or whatever the things are from just people breaking into your boat to steal booze or whatever, you know, things that are not huge, but we still worry about things on our boat. So <clears throat> there was a big problem that existed out there. I had the background in, in technology, electronics and code to put together a solution back in 2006 which became Cyber Marine what it is today. So the leadership position we've been able to maintain, I think is attributed largely to an intimate knowledge of boats and, and boating and boat problems, as well as a, you know, a lifetime in electronics and computers. So I put those together and that's really given us the tools um, to build a great team here to provide products that solve real world problems. And in technology, I think that's generally the recipe for for success in leadership. Absolutely, absolutely, that's great. Um, tell us a little bit about the componentry that's necessary to uh, have a, a Siren Marine system on board, both in terms of monitoring and control. So so the, the box itself, I, I've got actually our, our newest device right here. This is the, the Siren 3 Pro. We're super excited about it. It will be shipping in uh, just a matter of a few weeks. This is the, the mother of all IoT right here. What's packed into this? Because boats are complicated and hard and um, challenging environment with NMEA 2000 and lots of networks that don't necessarily like to talk to each other. Um, you got outboard engines that want to talk to digital switching and they want to talk to MFDs and they, you know, they share the NMEA 2000 protocol, but they have their own nuances. So it's a very challenging thing to do. Um, and I'll circle back to, to the Garmin entry as well, because I think it's a, an important distinction. We're, we're actually delighted to see another player that's capable in our space. But the, the components required, or what does it take to make a smart boat system or a connected boat system, it depends on really what you want to get out of. So to monitor a boat for basic security and bilge and high water, um, our, our current product, the MTC, it actually has an incredible amount of functionality to include uh, the ability to talk and, and push controls to anything on the enemy at 2000 bus. But for, for an 18 foot whaler that's exposed, it's open, probably has a, a handful of electronics on there and definitely open to, to rainwater, to low batteries, to leaving the battery switch on, those kinds of things. It doesn't take much. And when I think about the hardware and the requirements of the hardware or the components, it comes down to, I think, a boater's interest in, in boating. And I, I, would, I would make the argument that that, that person has got an 18-foot boss whaler that's been in the family for 50 years has as much fun going out on Saturday and cruising around the harbor and tubing or fishing or whatever as the, you know, the guy with the 70-foot princess or, or you know, Hinkley picnic boat or whatever. We're, we're all on the water kind of for the same things and enjoying being on the water. And the ability to take you know, a piece of hardware, whether it's the, the Siren 3 Pro, which is an extremely comprehensive device with Wi-Fi and NEMA 2000 and, and a lot of custom uh, proprietary protocols that its capabilities are outstanding. You, you don't need all that. You know, that, that 18 foot Boston Wheeler, you want to go down there, turn the key, have it crank up. And the, the hardware required to provide a really meaningful connected experience for that owner could be our, could be our original Pixie product, which was, was very basic, but still provided, battery monitoring, high water bilge activity, uh, GPS tracking, all over cellular. So what you're going to see is a, a, an ever-growing product options where, you know, whatever boat you have, there'll be the right level of connectivity at the right price point so that you can have a connected experience. You can check on your boat. Your boat will tell you when there's a problem. You can track it and, and control basic circuits. So you've mentioned NMEA 2000 and you've mentioned cellular connectivity. Uh, is there also... Wi and Wi-Fi is mentioned. And Wi-Fi, yeah. And Bluetooth. Uh, thanks, Kevin. And is there a plan for, or do you already have in place a satellite connectivity? 
We do. And we have two flavors right now. The, the flavor that's currently available is a, um, it's a small GPS and I'm sorry, satellite antenna, I guess a GPS antenna that is available today. So you, if you go offshore, the entire system doesn't become available over satellite, but the tracking element does and some very basic monitoring function. Mm-hmm. The, the Siren 3 Pro, one of the differences between this is uh, probably Q2 will release that part of the, the program where we have full satellite control uh, bi-directional, meaning the boat can communicate with the cloud via satellite and give you all the data, alerts, notifications that would come over cellular. Or if you're on the shore side and you want to do all the kind of things that you can do through the app over, over satellite, it's, it's full control both ways. So that's what's coming. The basic satellite tracking um, is available today. So is it practical to install um, a Siren Marine telematic system on an existing boat? Absolutely. Yeah, great, great question. As a matter of fact, the majority of our customers um, up until recent times have, have been retrofits. Um, you've got your boat. They find Sire Marine like, hey, I'd love to get connected. It's always been designed and still is designed to be very do-it-yourself friendly. Uh, it's very straightforward. You can connect into um, existing sensors, uh, bilge, pumps, float switches, um, whatever's there. You know, being a boater, and the majority of our, our senior management here are passionate, lifelong boaters. A handful of us are still licensed captains, and so we, we crawled around in the bilges. <laughs> we know what it takes to, to hook up a bilge pump, to pull wires, that kind of stuff. So we tried to make it very user friendly to install. More and more as the company grows, um, my attention, my, my management's team's attention is really focused on the, the, the B2B relationships. Uh, we've got some very exciting announcements coming out in the uh, very near future. Uh, we've recently partnered with Cummins. We've recently partnered with a, um, just a whole bunch of, of OEMs. Our, our list of builder partners is, is around 25 now. The, those partners that are becoming standard equipment is growing. If you have an ME2000 or a, you know, even a basic bus with an MFD and a couple of things connected to it, the ability for us to pull data off of that, that may be an engine fault code or maybe engine performance data, and provide that back to the OEM engine manufacturer that can then provide the, the boater enhanced services or detect alerts or trends that they may want to get ahead of before a, a problem occurs on that motor. So the more that the boater has on the boat, the, the bigger the system that can it can be built. But for that for that 18 foot whaler, I, I love that analogy because there's a lot of them. And and they're open. they you know, you know, uh, our COO has his 18 foot whaler on a mooring here in Newport. And whenever it rains real heavy, he's checking his app to see if the, the high water sensor is going off yeah. or to see if the boat's moved or to see yeah. where it is on the, the geofence. We had a 50 knot squall that came through about a, about 10 days ago and six boats sunk. Wow. Two of wow. which were racing or actively out racing mm-hmm. and sunk outside. So things like that, the peace of mind to grab your app, take a look at what's happening and okay, there's my boat. Everything looks fun. Yeah. So that has to be really reassuring to be able to yeah. tell if your boat's taken on water or not. Absolutely. And it, again, it's that 18 foot Boston whaler right on up to a, you know, a 70, 80 foot um, custom boat. It's really, it's that, Better boating experience is what we're now trying to provide. It's, it's not just control. It's not just security. It's not just monitoring. It's really the connected boating experience, which we think is a, is a better overall boating experience. So Dan, so tell me, maybe you just break down for me the different, um, you have these four different communication channels, uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, cellular, satellite. Can you just tell me, what each of those modes of communication are for. Yep. Um, cellular is, is the foundation and the primary channel of communication. So when, when I was starting this in 2006 and kind of thinking about, should it, should it be Bluetooth? Should it be Wi-Fi? Should it be any of the pr- protocols are available? The reason we went with cellular, which has turned out to be the right um, decision and becomes even more so today, than the before is because it's everywhere. So no matter where you take your boat, with the exception of a few very odd places you probably never want to go boating, 
there's going to be a cellular connection there. It's consistent. It's reliable. It just gets better and better and better. It's ubiquitous. Um, anywhere that there's normal voting happening, there's a cellular connection. As it relates to today, <clears throat> with the advent of going to LTE, CAT-M, CAT-M1, um, LTE is es essentially synonymous with 4G and 5G. So what you see on your phone when you're looking at the bars, you know, that translates more or less the same to the kind of connectivity we have available for our, our, our box. The reason that Wi-Fi is in particular a very bad choice for a boat monitoring system is that even, even at your home, the, the, the necessity to have to restart your router from time to time. If you, if you experience marina Wi-Fi, it's terrible at best. Sometimes you can get on, sometimes you can't. So for critical systems, you would never want Wi-Fi. The reason Wi-Fi is there is that gives us the ability to connect to a Garmin plotter, to an outboard motor, to any of the systems now that all have firmware. And just like your phone and everything else in our lives, our watches, our cars, everything has firmware and everything needs firmware updates from time to time. So our paradigm, and this is one of the big differences between um, where we are today and where a company like Garmin is today, is that they have a lot of this stuff built in, I would assume, as well. But this is their first entry into the game. And of course, we've read everything. We, you know, we actually talk to Garmin quite often. And you know, I'm, I'm, the next thing I want to do with Garmin is provide a CyberMarine interface for their Empire Bus digital switching. Uh, we, we rolled out a big year and a half integration with C-Zone recently. So you can control your entire C-Zone digital switching system from our app. Um, it goes through there, works with C-Zone program, and we're their first official partner to accomplish this. And I think we will be for a long time because it was, again, it took a lot of money and it took a lot of engineering to pull that off. So, so where Wi-Fi becomes relevant is when we want to connect with another product on the boat, that's really where the Wi-Fi protocol is, is powerful. And uh, in Q4, we'll be releasing video. So there's also utility to talk to the cameras and also to publish bigger pieces of video if Wi-Fi is available through the Wi-Fi channel. And that's, that's more or less a business um, decision just so we're using less cellular data if Wi-Fi is available. The same goes with Bluetooth. Bluetooth is a smaller band, less data can be passed over it, and it's largely for on-vessel type communications and, and also for the OEMs. So uh, Bluetooth in particular, one of the things that we use it for primarily is if, if you are a boat builder, you install a, install a siren system, you can connect without having to have an active cellular um, connection to exercise the device and validate that it's that it's up and running and connected correctly. Um, so, so the different uh, communication, and then satellite is really just for offshore remote location monitoring. Um, it's kind of the same thing as, as cellular. But the other two are very different. It's a great question, and a lot of times when people go, oh, you've got Wi-Fi, the thought is it's a Wi-Fi hotspot. And it is a Wi-Fi hotspot for devices but it's not necessarily like you can jump onto the Siren 3 Pro and now surf the internet right. through our connection. Okay, got and, it. And we've looked at that. And, the, and the, the, really the paperwork and the investment to be certified to be a human accessible hotspot is just everyone's got one on their phone anyway. So we, we didn't see the value in providing yet another Wi-Fi hotspot um, for human access. And there's security reasons for all of that. So with the, it's the Siren 3 Pro, so you can turn from afar, you can turn systems on and off on your boat. Um, are there any systems, onboard systems, that really don't lend themselves well to being turned on and off by the, by the system, by the Siren yeah. 3 Pro? A absolutely, and there's, a, there's not a long list, but there is a list. And gyro stabilizers are a product type that we're starting to work with more and more. And the initial concerns there, that the ability to spool up a gyro or not is, is I won't say trivial, but it's not a heavy lift. Um, the concern was, do you actually want a, you know, a big, heavy gyro spooling up on the boat when you're not there? And in the end, it was determined among the people we're working with that, yeah, it's okay, because they've got enough fail-safes built into the device that if something goes wrong, it automatically shuts itself off. Same goes with generators. Um, generators are one of the things that we will start to, to 
provide remote startup for. Mm-hmm. Your boat's on the mooring, you were ashore, you left a bunch of lights on, and you're, you get the low battery alert, so wouldn't it be nice to fire up the generator? Sure. Well, we, we can do that now, and it's really just vetting the safety protocols so that you feel good about cranking up a generator or some type of device that you, you, you may want to be aboard to do. It's getting closer and closer to where the list, of, and I'm trying to think of a good example other than those two that we don't. I guess heating, heating systems are something we don't allow control of as well. Okay. So technology is expensive. So can you, uh, how expensive is it going to be to equip a boat with um, Siren Marine system? Yeah, for, for, for this guy, this guy will, will retail at $749. Um, it's a very comprehensive box. It doesn't need a whole lot of stuff to, to build the rest of it, a float switch or a you know, handful of wired sensors um, that could be existing. Um, or you have the option of going wireless. So our, our wireless sensors are proprietary. Again, they're patented. Um, that technology is patented. All, all of this is patented, by the way. Even the NMEA 2000 application we wrote is a, is a patented software package. So the wireless sensors cost $125 a piece. So if you have three or four wireless sensors for entry, bilge, high water, temperature, um, for $1,000, $1,200, you can have a very comprehensive system. Okay, so not so expensive I mean, relative expensive. to uh, a cost of, say, an MFD that can cost you two or $3,000 nowadays. Ab- absolutely. Right. Um, this, the Siren 3 Pro is, a, is, a, is the, the flagship product in a series, the new Siren 3 series. The, the next one that we'll release will either be the, the Siren 3 or the Siren 3 Plus. Both of them will come out. Uh, we're not really sure which one we'll release next. They're both kind of... Uh, in process, but but it's really more of a decision of which one do we want to release first. Um, certifications may have something to do with that. We, we anticipate that the Siren 3 will be $199 retail, mm. and the Siren 3 Plus will be somewhere in between. So the idea is that for that 18-foot Boston Whaler that really wants battery tracking, high water, and maybe an entry sensor for a, a locker, mm-hmm. we, we don't want to burden the, the device at 750 um, for a consumer that just has a handful of basic telematics needs that we can we can solve those with a much smaller much more cost um, focused uh, offering at 199 so and that's that's all happening early next year um, these products are already up and live and working <clears throat> it's just a matter of finishing this guy shipping it next month we'll immediately decide which of those two we finish next it's all the same software. The software is the hard part. The mechanical, the electrical is is much easier. I won't say it's easy, but it's much easier than the software. So, sure. so for what I would say is for any consumer, for any boater out there, from a jet ski up to you know a hundred foot boat, there's going to be a product that fits the budget and the requirements. I got you. And and tell us a little bit about service fees. Uh, yeah. So, so, um, and this, it's been, a, again, we've, we've led the way we've had, uh, we've had customers that have been subscribers for a decade now and our price is actually, I'm, I'm trying to think, has it ever changed? I don't think our price has ever changed. It's been 15 bucks a month, um, <clears throat> since we started. Very affordable. Very affordable. Exactly. You know, when you, when you think about what a gallon of gas costs, you know, for, for the price of a couple gallons of gas, every time it rains or you ask that question, you know, is my shore power plugged in and you look, it's worth it every single time. I mean, yeah. we, we've over 10 years of doing tons of boat shows. Um, you know, as a startup, you, you do, you, you get in front of people wherever you can. We have done thousands and thousands and thousands of boat shows. And I've been at most all of them myself. <laughs> and well, I've, you know, I feel my sympathies. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I tell you, it's, it's, been a, it's been a lot of effort. But I've, but I've had these, I've had thousands of conversations with, with consumers, both customers and people who were just asking. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the comment we hear very often is, well, I, I, that's very affordable. I thought it would be more. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I think eventually that price will actually come down. I don't think it'll ever go up. It may go up as functionality becomes more and more available, but it'll be, you know, kind of a la carte if you want sad, two-way satellite, that'll cost a little bit more just because it, it costs us a little more. Dan, is there anything we haven't said yet that you'd like to get the message out? 
you know, the, 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 the message that I, I really like to focus on these days is, is that telematics is affordable, that the connected boat is here, it's here to stay. Um, you should begin to expect it. There's a device for every boat and for every problem we have a solution. It's not complicated to connect. And I, I think in terms of what we're bringing to market right now, this, I, I can't overstate, it's really good. I mean, it is a game changer. And we're, we're working with One Water Marine, we're working, you know, we're working towards a relationship with Marine Max, um, the, the, the motor OEMs I can't talk about quite yet, but it's super exciting. We have a great relationship with Power Products. So all of this, I mean, the connected boat is going to be the next biggest thing in the marine industry. And I, and I think, you know, I can talk to the consumer piece of it all day long, but what's a little less exciting to talk about, but much more important, is that all the work we're doing right now is with OEMs, or the major work we're doing is with OEMs, because it drives service. And the ability for us to provide a product that consumers love, the app is great, it's easy to use, it's easy to install, and it's affordable, but it also now provides the boat builders, the engine manufacturers, all the stakeholders in that boat, the digital switching folks. Now they can offer customers with their products connectivity back to that product. And that connectivity can provide an engine manufacturer fault codes, service problems, engine data that just like our cars tell us when they need an engine change, an oil change these days, why doesn't your boat do that? Well, now it does. And the way that the auto industry works is very much a service oriented business. You, you sell the car once, but you sell service to that car for the rest of that car's life. And, and that's what we're bringing to the marine industry. Again, the, it's like telematics is the, is the thing that makes it all possible, but telematics plus our patented NMA 2000 capability makes an entirely new service industry possible for the marine industry. That's what, I, that's what gets me up in the morning. All right. Jim, <laughs> anything else for, for Dan? No, just a big thank you for spending the time with us and our viewers today. Uh, we appreciate it. We look forward to talking to you more in the future as uh, this technology um, evolves. Great. Jim, Kevin, thanks so much for having me on. Um, I love to talk about this stuff. So any, any time you have a question, reach out and uh, love to talk about it. Okay, Dan, thanks again. Folks, make sure you check the links below in the description for Siren Marine website, sirenmarine.com. Check out the uh, list of boat builders already working with them also in the description. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time on Boating Roundtable.